Hey, this is Seeing Detail. I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. I'm going to be doing my uh, predictions for UFC 185, Pettis versus Dos Anjos, which happens on March 14th. Uh, overall, a uh, really strong main card. And you actually got some good prospects on the undercard, too. I like uh, Elisa Doro, uh, Cruxshank fights, Vinil Daryush. Uh, even heavyweight prospects, uh, Josh Copeland fights Jared Rochal. Um, Sergio Pettis is on the fight pass prelims. Watch out for Joseph Duffy. Guy's really good. And um, even in women's bantamweight, you got Jermaine Durandami versus Larissa Pacheco. Both. Uh, Pacheco is only 20 years old. Um, you know, she's a prospect just by age. Uh, Durandami, she actually doesn't have a lot of experience, so she's still a prospect. Uh, let's get started. Uh, Anthony Showtime Pettis fights Rafael Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos has a 23 and 7 record, four wins by KO Tikeo, eight wins by Sub. He's 30 years old on a three fight winning streak. Most recently beating, very much destroying Nate Diaz. Trains out of Kings MMA. Uh, he is a legit Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt with greatly improving Muay Thai. He is a pressure fighter. Uh, always moving forward, he has strong leg kicks, heavy handed, knocked out Benson Henderson. He's a good wrestler, both offensively and defensively as well. Pettis has an 18 and 2 record, 7 wins by KO Tico, 8 wins by Sub, 28 years old on a 5 fight win streak, training out of Rufus Sport. He is the current UFC lightweight champion, a former WEC lightweight champion. He has some strong kickboxing. Real unorthodox, too. He'll throw you know, a lot of different kicks and whatnot. Just give you a lot of different looks. He switches stances a lot. His overall defense is really good, too. He's a guy that... I keep saying this, and it's it's been true for a while now. You don't really see Pettis get hit clean. He's not a guy you see get wobbled. He's not, you don't even see his like head snap back from strikes too much. He's very accurate with his striking. His takedown defense is greatly improving, especially with like Ben Askren. I know Tyron Woodley stopped by uh, Rufus Sport as well. Uh, his counter wrestling is good. If you take him down, he's hard to hold down. Strong Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's good off his back. Submitted um, Gilbert Melendez with a guillotine choke in his last fight. And he's a good scrambler as well. Desanos is definitely a worthy title challenger. Uh, a very good fighter. I'm always, I'm very high on Dos Anjos. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think he beats Anthony Pettis. It just, uh, one thing about Anthony Pettis is he's one of the most opportunistic fighters, which I mean is once he finds an opening, he will take it and win the fight. And it's a very small opening at times, you know. Like I said, like the way he beat Gilbert Melendez, I mean, he found that he, he you know, he rocked Melendez. Melendez shoots for a sloppy takedown. Goes for an opportunistic guillotine, you know? It's... That's the thing. You give Anthony Pettis an inch, he will take a mile. You know? Here's the thing, too. Everyone does this against Anthony Pettis. It kind of works for, like, a round, maybe. And Dos Anjos is more than likely going to do this to you. Everyone pressures Anthony Pettis against the cage. Maybe even try some takedowns against the cage. Maybe dirty box him or whatnot. But they always try and just bully him against the cage. Usually try and take him down. Melinda's tried to do that. Too good enough effect where I actually gave him round one. Just barely though, you know? Um... Benson Henderson tried to do that in their second fight. He just kind of grinding him up against a cage. can not get a takedown. So that's what's going to happen. <laughs> you know? Hey, let's pin Anthony Pettis against the cage. And Dos Anjos is a pressure fighter. He likes to, you know, get in his opponent's face. Pin him up against the cage. Work from there. He strikes well. And, you know, he'll attack, like, and then go for a takedown. Once, um... You know, uh, his opponent, his guard's up. I don't know if it's going to... I think it'll work for a round. <laughs> you know, it just it is what it is. You know? 
And then Anthony Pettis will find some sort of opening in the stand-up. Maybe some body kicks. Um, opportunistic head kick, you know. Some flashy moves once he gets space and gets his rhythm going. And uh, gets the win. Um, but yeah, it just somehow uh, would not even at this point would not even surprise me if Pettis got a submission on a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt like Dos Anjos. Um, you know, it just I, I can see Pettis just picking his shots really well. Using footwork to avoid getting pressured, maybe probably in the later, you know, and like after round two. Round one, it seems like Pettis just needs to get settled or something like that. So I noticed that a lot with him, you know, it's just like he goes up against a cage, it's like his opponents, and then, you know, his opponents force him against a cage, try and take him down, whatnot. Probably gonna happen here, you know. Once he gets settled, gets his footwork going, gets his strikes going. You know, and everything going. Um, I think uh, Pettis will... I make it sound like he's going to have an easy time with Dos Anjos. But um, I am high on Dos Anjos. But it's, it's a case of like... I don't know. And, I, you know, it's a weird comparison to say. Like, I just don't know what Dos Anjos really, truly provides that's that much different than, say, a Gilbert Melendez, in a sense. They're different fighters, but, you know, they're both high-pressure fighters and whatnot. I think Dos Anjos has more power, you know? Um, he, he's also the bigger fighter. So I guess the, there's that going on. Um, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of high-pressure fighting from Dos Anjos. I'm... Wouldn't surprise me if he maybe gets a takedown on Pettis. And Pettis just, like, gets up. <laughs> you know, honestly. Um, but eventually, I expect Pettis to just find his range. And there's others is really good. I make it sound, like I said, I'm making it sound like it's going to be like an easy one for Pettis. And it could very well be just because he's so opportunistic where you're just like, okay, and the fight's uh, pretty competitive, pretty competitive, pretty competitive. Like the, the Melendez fight. Oh, I'm pretty competitive, you know. You know, and then it's like, oh, hey, he's finished. Well, wow. <laughs> you know, and, and that's, that's Pettis. You know, that, that's, that's how I see it. You know, if Pettis gets wins, it's usually just kind of, you know, he fights like Joe Lozon, and it's like, okay, hey, this is cool, blah, 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 blah. Head kick. Oh, shoot. Hey, he won. Like, <laughs> oh, Don Sroni. Body kick. Oh, he won. Armbar from the back. Oh, hey, Pettis won. Like, like it, it's, it's a very sudden thing. If you kind of notice it, you know. Usually, when I see other fighters win, it's usually a sequence. Even like Ronda Rousey, it's not really sudden per se. It's usually a sequence that leads to the finish. With Pettis, it's very just like head kick, body kick. Oh, hey, he won. Oh, cool. He, he's hitting uh Benson Anderson on the body. Okay, Benson Henderson takes him down. Armbar, done. It's like, oh, hey, <laughs> Pettis won. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's, he doesn't usually have, like, this crazy finishing sequence a lot of times. It's, it's a very sudden thing. That's why I say he's more of an opportunistic, um, say, more of an opportunistic guy. So, it's not to say he could get the finish, and it's more likely than not. It's just going to be this really sudden thing where you're just like, oh, hey, you got the finish. Wow. Like, wow, that was quick. You know, out of nowhere. I didn't expect that, you know. I expect the fight to be competitive, um, but the fact of the matter is I can see it like the Gilbert Melendez fight where it's like competitive until it's over, you know, uh, and usually with Pettis winning. Um... If not, yeah, I can see Pettis getting a decision, you know, just out striking him from the outside, using footwork to avoid the pressure fighting, landing the cleaner strikes, avoiding takedowns. Hey, he can do that too, you know. So, yeah, Anthony Showdown Pettis would have won there. Uh, next one after that, Carla Cookie Monster Esparza defends her UFC strawweight title against Joanna Jajacek. Um... 
Esparza has a 10 and 2 record, 3 wins by KO Tico, 4 wins by Sub, 27 years old, on a 5 fight win streak, training out of Team Oyama with the likes of Ian McCall. She is the current UFC Women's Strawweight Champion, a former Invicta FC Strawweight Champion. Uh, she's most notable for her strong wrestling, really good top control. Um, her Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is really strong. She choked out uh, Rose Namajunas in her last fight. And her stand-up actually is improving. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of power. She's good at avoiding. She, she's good at being on her bike, you know, um, landing. Um, you know, her boxing it, it it is just improving. She she does land land cleanly, um, as well. She's fine. JJ check has an eight and zero undefeated record. Two wins by KOTK, one win by sub. Twenty seven years old. Uh, she has some strong Muay Thai, really heavy-handed. Uh, knocked down Claudia Gedalia with an uppercut in the first round of their fight. Very contentious decision. I actually gave that fight to Gedalia, but JJ check ended up getting the win. Her takedown defense is solid, especially against the cage. She she has a really good base to avoid takedowns against the cage. Her counter wrestling is good too. You know, when she got taken down by Gedalia, she just got back to her feet. This is interesting. There, there, okay, there's a couple of things to look at in this fight besides skill set. I usually look at skill set. It's really hard to do in women's MMA because it's still developing. You know, what you see, you know, isn't like, isn't like years on, it's not, nothing's perfected yet is what I want to say. And so one thing that makes this fight interesting to me is Esparza. Um, one, look at her past opposition. You know, are they finished products? I would say no. Honestly, like when she won the title against Beck Rawlings, I mean Beck Rawlings is not a finished product. When she fought Rose Nama Yunus, you know, I mean, it's just she's not fighting like finished products. Last time she probably fought a finished product was against uh, Jessica Aguilar, and Aguilar ended up winning. You know, um, Jajacek, for the most part, is more experienced. She looks like closer to a finished product than uh, as far as uh, like previous opponents. You know, she doesn't, Jajacek doesn't leave that, like, with you, Rose Namajunas or like Beck Rawlings or something like that, they leave a lot of holes, you know, you're on the ground, you can take the back pretty easy, you know, knee slide uh, worked against Nami Yunus to thwart all her submission attempts, you know, um, relatively easier to take down as well. Um, one thing that to know about Jajacek too is that she's pretty big for the weight class. As far as it's pretty small for the weight class, I want to point that out because I know some people are saying, oh, well, Claudia Gedalia managed to take down to Jacek. Well, as far as it should be able to, too. Well, my problem with that is, like, Gedalia would get, like, this over under clinch and bully her down. I mean, she would just power her way to a takedown. As far as it doesn't necessarily fight that way. I mean, if she gets a clinch, she just kind of holds it. He wants, like, the Taurus fight and, like, the ultimate fighter. You know, I got her back. But she's not going to, like, bully. She Her style doesn't seem to, like, bully fighters down. She has a couple more, like, finesse-style takedowns, actually. Um, and against Jajajak, that I think that might be pretty tough. Like I said, her takedowns, you know, um, I, I, I don't find Asparos' takedowns to be more clinch-based takedowns. They seem to be more, like, leg attack takedowns. I think Jajajak's really good at defending those. So, that's the thing. I might be underestimating as far as I, I, I've done it before a couple times. But I'm going to go to Jajajak here. Um, like I said, I, I think one thing, skill-wise, we know what they're going to do. Okay, and it, it really just depends on, hey, do you think Esparza can get to take on some Jajajak? Maybe get dominant position and submit her? Or else at least just ride top control for like five rounds. Yeah, she could do that. She very well could. Or could Jajacek keep the fight standing and defend takedowns? Yeah, I think she can. I, I really do. 
Um, like I said, I, I think you, you got to look at the fact that, hey, who has as far as a fought? Has she fought finished products? Or is she fighting, like, developing fighters? For, for the most part, I think she's fought a, and beaten a good amount of, like, developing fighters. Or just, like, flawed fighters. Didn't she fight, like, Lisa Ellis, I think? And just, like, beat her pretty pretty easily, you know? Um, but Alice is, is relatively flawed as a fighter, you know? Um, so, I, I'm just not... You know, I, I could very well be underestimating Esparza and overestimating Jajacek. But it's just... I think Jajacek... My reasoning is this. She does have good takedown defense against a style of takedowns that Esparza implements. She's going to be the bigger fighter. Um, she's more... I, I don't want to use the word finished product because she's only 27 and 8 and 0. But she's more of like a refined fighter. Where it's just kind of like... Any... You know, she's not going to have those obvious holes that I've seen in Carlos Suarez's last... Uh, uh, previous opposition. You know, even if you take her down, it's not like you're just going to like... Maybe as far as I can, uh, you know, um, can just like pass the dominant position like super easily. Yeah, Gadalia had a hard time doing that, you know, and Gadalia's, you know, legit Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt and huge for the weight class. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with JJ check here. Um, I think she can just outstrike Esparza, avoid takedowns, and not. And as far as I can tell, she doesn't have the very glaring holes that, like, a Rose Namajunas would have or, like, a Beck Rawlings would have, uh, for example. Not to say that I don't see, like, you know, like, I think it's a close fight. I can definitely see Carlos Sparza just using spear wrestling and grappling to get the win here. Um, like I said, I, I'm just, I'm not so, I'm not so just on the fact that just on the fact that like the JTEC's more of a refined um, product than a refined fighter than a lot of Esparza's previous competition. So the JTEC for the win there. Next fight after that, Matt Brown fights Johnny Hendricks. Matt Brown, 19 and 12 record, uh, 12 wins by Kotiko, 5 wins by sub. He also has 9 losses by submission, 34 years old. Uh, he has some strong Muay Thai, really always pushing forward, and he's super aggressive with high pressure. Extremely resilient, got a really strong clinch. Uh, his striking from the clinch with knees and elbows are top notch. He has dumped guys like Eric Silva and even Robbie Lawler uh, to the ground from the Thai clinch, um, or from the double double collar tie, yeah. Uh, his grappling's improving too, you know, like, he's, you know, he survived on the ground with Eric Silva, he actually goes for triangles and arm bars off his back, and he's just really active off his back as well, his cardio's good, he's gone five rounds with Robbie Lawler, and Lichter's fine, his chin is really good, uh, one thing about Matt Brown though, is weak against body strikes, uh, guys like Jordan Mean and Eric Silva have dropped him, or at least made him kneel, from all body strikes. Johnny Hendricks, 16 and 3 record, 8 wins by KRTK, 1 win by sub, 31 years old, training out of team takedown. He is a former UFC welterweight champion. He's a strong wrestler with really strong takedown defense. His stand up is improving. He strikes in combination now, and you saw that in both of the Robbie Lawler fights. He, you know, he, he starts with the hands and goes with the kick, and, and will throw like some pretty lengthy combinations too. Uh, sometimes uh, anywhere from three to like six, six strike combinations. It's pretty heavy handed. Hasn't shown it as of late. Has a good chin himself. Um. Okay. He, he, I said there's a John Hendricks. It's 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 gonna happen here. I just I just know it. Okay. Whenever Johnny Hendricks wins, if he wins decisively, it's because he finishes opponent. Almost, I think in his last, I I, I want to say six decision victories or something like that. Whether it's against like Kasha, Condit, both Robbie Lawler fights, GSP. Um, who else is fought? You know that went to decision. It's 
all oh Mike Pierce, Mike Pierce, another one. It's always contentious, in a sense of like, oh, the fight could have gone to the the opponent at any time. Sometimes it did, and sometimes it didn't. You know, like Robbie Lawler, even the first Robbie Lawler fight. You know, it could. You know, I I think there is an argument to maybe give Robbie Lawler three rounds instead of two. I didn't do that. <laughs> um, I gave it that fight to Hendricks, but the second fight really contentious. The GSP fight contentious. And he lost those ones. But then there's like Mike Pierce, Josh Koshek that are a bit contentious that Hendricks won. Um, reason why I say that, I think this fight's going to decision. Uh, you know, it's just... I see this fight going like the Carlos Condit fight. Where it's just like... Matt Brown's going to go forward. He's going to find Hendricks' head. He's going to hit him a lot. Hendricks will probably use some combinations, push forward, maybe even spam the left hand. You know, left hand, left hand, left hand. And then, you know, in order to, if Matt Brown's gaining some, like, momentum, Hendricks will probably go for a takedown. You know, probably hold him there. You know, probably get up. Matt Brown will probably find some good hits. Maybe Hendricks will probably find some good hits, too. You know, he'll land a couple of his combinations. Land that left hand, spam the left hand, you know. Um, but I think in the end, it's just gonna be like that Condit fight, where it's just kind of like, okay, he's gonna, he's gonna land, his opponent's gonna land, maybe even more. <laughs> um, and I can see that, where Matt Brown probably could actually land more than Johnny Hendricks. But then the wrestling's gonna be that one difference maker, where it's like Johnny Hendricks will probably get that takedown when it's really necessary and just get enough takedowns to win the round. So, Johnny Hendricks for the win there. Next fight is out. Roy, Big Country Nelson fights Alistair Overeem. Nelson has a 20 and 10 record. 11 wins by KRTK. 5 wins by Sub. That's has 2 losses by KRTK. 38 years old. He's only 6 foot as opposed to Overeem who's 6'5". Uh, Nelson's actually only won one of his last four fights. He is an Ultimate Fighter winner, a legit Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He's got a strong chin. Uh, Hunt managed to crack it though recently. Y you gotta wonder how long Roy Nelson can just take beatings from like everyone. You know he fights like Stipe, Daniel Cormier, Verdum, Junior dos Santos. I, I kind of wonder how long he can last just taking hits. His stand up's actually good. His overhand right is obviously his money punch. And his stand up defense is terrible. Um, he's always in the fight, though. He's very game, very durable. His cardio, though, has been questionable as of late. Alistair Overeem, 38 and 14 record with one no contest. 16 wins by KO Tico. 19 wins by Sub. That says 9 of his 14 losses by KO Tico and 2 losses by submission. Also 34 years old. Oh, no, no. Why did I say also? He's 4 years younger. 34 years old. 6'5". Training out of Jackson Wingle, John. He is a former Strike Force heavyweight champion. At his best, he's a strong kickboxer with really good knees. And just a really strong clinch in general. Gets good takedowns off of the clinch. He's a good wrestler. His takedown defense is actually pretty solid. His Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is strong. His ground and pound is really good. Knocked out Stefan Struve in his last fight. His chin is really weak, though. He's just not a durable guy. I'm kind of going back and forth on this fight just because Roy Nelson always has that overhand right, and Asha Overeem does not have a good chin. <laughs> However, Asha Overeem as an all around fighter is probably better. Um. Looked pretty good in his fight against uh, Stipe. I would actually like to see Overeem just... Oh, not Stipe. I want to say Stipe. Struve. Struve. Jeez. I'm just, why did I say that? Um, but uh, that's the thing with Overeem. Like, I would actually like to see him do a more grappling style, uh, you know, takedown and ground and pound style fighting. I think that will preserve his chin. And uh, he can still get wins. If he does that against Nelson, he could win, and I think he can implement that style. I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility. He's going to watch out in the first and second round, especially for that big right hand. 
Nelson found it uh, against a good amount of his opposition. You know, um, would not surprise me if he finds it on Overeem. But I am going to go with Overeem for the win here. Um, he shouldn't stand with Nelson for too long. He's got to avoid that overhand right. Duck under it and go for a takedown or something, you know. Um, if he goes for a more grappling-oriented style fighting, kind of like what Frank Mir did to Roy Nelson, I think he can actually cruise to decision victory. Um, I hope that's what he does. If he stands with Nelson, it's just... Nelson's got, you know, if, if Nelson's chin is still holding up, too good of a chin, and, you know, he'll take two or three to give one, but that one can end the fight. I'm going to go with Alistair Overeem, not super confident in this, because, you know, Overeem just, he beat Struve, and before that he got knocked out by Rothwell, you know, he gets knocked out by Matt, uh, Travis Brown, you know, um, but... It's like, I'm, I'm kind of almost like holding out hope that like, he, it's not that he turns things around per se, but like use it, implements other parts of his, uh, his arsenal, like his clinch, you know, you, you know what Overeem's really bad at? Just boxing range. That guy's just bad at boxing range. Some guys are just not good at that range. He is good in clinch range. Stick with clinch range. He hurts people in clinch range. That's what he needs to do. You know, just get that clinch, get his knees, get his dumps, you know, if he, if he can. Get his takedowns, pound people out, you know. That's probably what he should do. I don't know if I can, can count on him to do that, but that's what I'm, who I'm going for. I'll show over him for the win there. Next fight after that, Chris Carriasso fights Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo, 7-0, undefeated record, 3 wins by KO TKO, 1 submission, 1 by strikes, 27 years old. He is an Olympic level wrestler. He has had trouble making 125 pounds. Um, I hope that's not a problem here. I want to see him in flyweight. You know, he's an interesting prospect. A real blue chipper, you know. In his last fight, who did he fight? Kamara? Or someone else? He showed some pretty good boxing, you know, he, he uses combinations well, solid boxer, and a good wrestler. Chris Carriasso, 17-6 record, 3 wins by KOTK, 2 wins by sub, SS3 losses by submission, 33 years old. He's got some good stand-up. One thing about Carriasso, more than anything else, he's just really game, you know. He's got a good Muay Thai game. Um, his grappling's good, you know. He, he, his submission ability is good. He's a good scrambler, you know. Um, just one of those good everywhere, not great at any one aspect of the game. I always find Carry also to be something more of a gatekeeper type than anything else. Um, but, you know, solid fighter. He could pull off the upset against Cejudo, especially if Cejudo is unprepared. But uh, I'm going to go with Cejudo. You know, if the boxing doesn't work out for Cejudo, he can always go to his wrestling. That's the thing. So it's like, oh, boxing's not working out? Oh, just wrestle. So, but uh, I think the story of this fight really is more if, like, Cejudo can make the weight. That's that's really what it comes down to. The ability's there. He's still young enough. He's still improving, you know? Um, it's just, can he make the weight? Is he motivated? You know, that's really what it comes down to with Cejudo. So, Cejudo for a win there. I see upset possibility just in the sense that Carriasso is just such a... He's such a game opponent, you know? Like, he doesn't have better, like... You know, he's not... The, he's probably not the better athlete than Cejudo. Uh, probably. He's not the better athlete or anything, but he's just a guy that's always in the fight, you know? But um, even then, I'd, I'd say if Carriasso even has an advantage here, it's in the stand-up with his Muay Thai, maybe, and just more experience. But um, I'm still going to go with Cejudo for a win there. Get out the prelims. These prelims will actually be on FX. Ross Pearson fights Sam Stout. Kate Pearson has a 16-8 record with one no contest, six wins by KOTK, five wins by sub. 
That's just three losses by KRT count, two losses by sub, 30 years old, training out of Alliance. He is an ultimate fighter winner. He's a good boxer, saw a takedown defense, and his, sta his gr overall grappling is improving. Sam Stout, 20 and 10 record with one draw, nine wins by KRT count, one win by sub. Has just three losses by submission, he's 30, 30 years old, trading wins and losses. Uh, trading wins and losses. He trains out of Team Tompkins and Syndicate these days. He's a good kickboxer with average grappling. Uh, Sam Stout is well known for having this really good chin. I think, but he's been in some wars and whatnot, and you can see him actually fighting a more conservative style of fight, uh, of fighting these days. You know? KJ Noons knocked him out in one of those, like, comical ways where Sam Sat was like finding the ref afterwards. Uh, I think Sam Sat's really kind of on a decline right now. He's been in, in 30 fights, you know. He's really been in the game for a while. And, and Ross Pearson, he lost against Al Iaquina in his last fight. He got knocked out. Ross Pearson, at the very least, is a solid fighter. He, he's kind of shown not to be a spectacular fighter. Um, but he should be able to beat uh, Sam Stout here. Yeah, I think he can actually outbox Sam Stout. So, um, yeah. Ross Pearson for the win there. Next fight after that, Roger Norvais fights Elias Theodoro. Theodoro has a 10 0 undefeated record. Four wins by KO Tico, two wins by Sub. 26 years old. He's going to be 6 1, whereas Norvais is uh, 6 3. Uh, Theodoro is an ultimate fighter winner. His wrestling's good. His ground and pound's actually really good. His stand-up's actually pretty solid as well. Um, he fought a really good... He fought that grinder in his last fight. Um, Bruno Santos? Is it? Oh, I think it might be Bruno Santos. Um, you know, managed to avoid his wrestling uh, for the most part, you know, and uh, get the win against a guy that's really hard to look good against. Uh, Roger Norris, though, 7 and 1 record, 3 wins by KO Tico, 2 wins by Sub, 31 years old. He's pretty big for the weight class. He's 6 3. His boxing is improving. Um, his wrestling's good, and he has good ground and pound as well. I was actually pretty impressed with uh, Norris' last fight against. Um, very tall guy. Luke Barnett. Uh, I think he dropped him, too. I, I was. Not expecting Norris to do very well against Barnett, and he exceeded expectation. Uh, his boxing looked much improved, and he's already been is a pretty decent wrestler with good ground bound. However, I'm pretty high on Elias Theodoro. I think he's actually one of the better prospects in the middleweight division. He's still 26 years old, not a bad wrestler himself. Also got good ground bound. Stand ups are steadily improving as well. So uh, yeah, I'll go with Elias Theodoro for the win there. Next fight after that, Darren, the Detroit superstar Crackshank, fights Benil Daryush. Daryush has a 9 and 1 record, 2 wins by KO Tico, 5 wins by Sub. 25 years old on a 2 fight win streak, most recently beating uh, Carlos Diego Ferreira. Trains out of King's MMA with the likes of Rafael Dos Anjos and Verdum. He is a not just a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, like a really high level. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Black Belt won a bunch of competitions, and whatnot. So wrestling's good, and his stand up is improving. With Crookshank, 16 and 5 record with one no contest, 9 wins by KO Tico, 1 win by sub. Has those 2 losses by submission, 29 years old. Training out of Michigan top team with the likes of Jason Fisher and uh, Ronda Marcos. He has a Taekwondo style stand up with really strong kicks. He uses side kicks and whatnot. Switch from Orthodox to Southpaw as well, especially with his kicks. Um, so he's relatively unorthodox. His takedown defense is actually pretty good. He is kind of weak off his back. And he is susceptible to being pressured. This one's actually tough for me to call because Benil Daryush, I don't think he's a better striker than, than Crookshank, but you gotta think with Cordero, they have a real high pressure style of fighting. Especially in the stand-up. And, and one thing is, with Crookshank, he backs himself up against a cage a lot. Um, so I kind of wonder if Darius is going to go for more of a pressure style on Crookshank to um, nullify those kicks. Wrestling-wise, like I said, but, uh, Darius, he was taken down uh, for a 
a lot in this last fight. I don't think he's, you know, he's not a great wrestler, though. Um, the Brazilian Jitsu is really good. If he takes it to the ground, correction could very well be in trouble. But uh, I think he might actually have a hard time taking down Crookshank. I'm gonna go Darren Crookshank here. Actually, it's just it's tough for me to say because I, I still think that Crookshank has the better stand up, more power at the very least. Um, if Darius can't take it to the ground, I think he might have some trouble here. I don't think he has that pressure and inside fighting down yet. I mean, it is stand-up still a work in progress? That's the thing. Um, so I think Darius's best bet is to wrestle Crookshank, and it's just um, at the very least, I think Crookshank should be able to defend takedowns. If he can't, he is in trouble. Uh, so, like I said, I'm going to go with Crookshank. If he gets r some real space to work, though, uh, he can make it a tough night for Daryush, you know. Next fight after that, uh, Josh Cuddly Bear Copeland fights Jared the Big, Sh the Big Show Rochelle. Copeland has a 9-on-1 record, 3 wins by KO Chico, 4 wins by Sub. He's 6-1, uh, and Rochelle 6-2, so around the same size. Uh, Copeland trains out of grudge. He's a good boxer, and he has a good dirty boxing as well. Rochelle, 11 and 2 record, 3 wins by KO Tico, 3 wins by Sub. He has those 2 losses by KO Tico, 28 years old. Training out of team takedown. He's a strong wrestler with really good top control, and he's really strong at the wrestling right posi uh, position. Stand up's decent, his chin's not very, not the greatest. He got knocked out by Olenek really bad. <clears throat> And then he also got knocked out by Derek Lewis. Um, you know, offensively, he actually didn't look that bad against Olenek. But he gets, like, over-eager sometimes. He overreaches. And, um, you know, his defense as a stand-up just isn't that great. This kind of seems like a striker versus grappler matchup. And I'm going to go with Rochelle for the win here. Especially if he gets his wrestling game going on. He should be able to just take down Copeland and ride him to a victory. Okay, on to fight past prelims. Ryan, Ryan uh, I don't know if it's Benoit or Benoit. I think it's Benoit in this case. Fights Sergio Pettis. Uh, Benoit has a 7-3 record. Six wins by KO Tico. One win by Sub. He last fought in November 2013. Um, was that against Sambo? I think that was against Sambo. His stand good. Uh, his overall grappling is good. And he's a good scrambler. With Pettis, 12 and 1 record, 3 wins by KO Tico, 3 wins by Sub. He's 21 years old on a 2 fight win streak, training on Rufus Sports. He's cutting back down to 125 for this fight. I, I remember hearing interviews with him when he was cutting to 125 and like he was losing his hearing and stuff like that. He had some really bad weight cuts to 125. I'm hoping he does it better this time. At his best, he's a strong kickboxer, he uses combinations, and his grappling is improving. I'll go with Sergio Pettis. When he really gets into his rhythm, he can really show off his stuff. Um, he would, he's not going to be undersized for the weight class as well. Um, I think he should be a better striker than Benoit. That's like a tough guy. You know, he, he's always in the fight. But um, Sergio Pettis for the win there. Next fight after that, Joseph Duffy fights Jake Lindsay. Lindsay has a 9 and 2 record, 4 wins by KO Tico, 3 wins by Sub. That's those two losses by submission. He's 28 years old on a two fight losing streak. His grappling is actually not too bad, even though he just lost to uh, Olivier Aubin Machere and Jake, uh, or John Tuck, by getting his uh, body heel striked by kicks, you know, um, when he had his back taken. Um. But with Lindsay, it, one of the better parts of his game is his clinch striking. His stand up is below average. His stand up defense is like non existent. I mean, like, I remember John Tuck was landing overhands, lead overhands over and over again. Joseph Duffy, 12 and 1 record, 3 wins by KO Tico, 8 wins by Sub, 26 years old, and 2 fight win streak. It is his first fight in the UFC. 
The most notable thing about Joseph Duffy is that he's the last fighter to beat Conor McGregor. And he submitted him, I believe, with an arm triangle. Um, he actually left MMA to do boxing. And um, he, he came back, though. I um, won, won some fights. And now he's in the UFC. He is a strong boxer. Um, I think he has a more of a hands-down style, but, you know, he moves his head a lot and whatnot. His Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu skills are solid. He, he, this guy is a legit, possible blue-chip prospect. I'm actually greatly looking forward to um, his debut uh, from what I've seen from him. Solid fighter, good in the stand-up, good in the ground. Not just because he beat like Conor McGregor, it's just he, he's a good fighter, you know. So Joseph Duffy for the win here. <clears throat> And finally, Jermaine, the Iron Lady, the Randami, fights Larissa Pacheco. Pacheco has a 10-1 record, 4 wins by K.O. Tico, 6 wins by Sub. And also has 1 loss by submission. She's only 20 years old. She's a finisher. It's never been the decision. Super aggressive. She pushes forward. Soft striking is more of a brawler. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is good, but she does lose positions in the grappling. With the Randami, she has a 4 and 3 record, 1 win by KO, 3 wins by decision, 30 years old. She last fought in November 2013. I think that was a loss to Amanda Nunez. Trains out of AKA. She is a Muay Thai champion. It doesn't show too much. She likes to clench a lot, and she does have good clint knees, though. That's probably one of her strongest weapons. Um, her other skills out, like, I haven't seen it too much in MMA, you know? Like, she doesn't have, like, particularly crazy kicks or elbows or anything like that. It's like her clenched knees are, like, one of her best weapons. Her takedown defense is improving, though. She is getting harder and harder to take down. Uh, I'm gonna go with Jermaine Durandami to win this one. I think Larissa Pacheco, she's a fun fighter, but she's so sloppy, you know? Um... I think Dave Rondami should be able to defend her takedowns. Heck, it wouldn't surprise me if Pacheco just pulls guard. I mean, she, she's really sloppy. Her style of uh, striking is more brawling. I think Dave Rondami can actually get clinches and maybe just calm that down. So, you know, Jermaine Dave Rondami for the win there. Okay, to uh, recap the main card of Anthony Pettis over Rafael Dos Anjos. Joanna Jajacek beating Carlos Sparza, Johnny Hendricks over Matt Brown, Alistair O'Reen beating Roy Nelson, and Henry Sadihudo over Chris Carriasso. On the FX prelims of Ross Pearson over Sam Stout, Elias Theodoro beating Roger Nervais, Darren Cruikshank over Benil Daryush, Jared Rorschach over Josh Copeland, and on the Fight Pass prelims of Sergio Pettis beating Ryan ben Benoit. Joseph Duffy over Jake Lindsay, and Jermaine Durandami beating Larissa Pacheco. So that's it for my predictions for UFC 185, Pettis vs. Dos Anjos, which happens on March 14th. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And that's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.